Welcome back to Proverbs 31 Life. Um, so I missed Monday's video. So normally I post Monday and Thursday. So this is, um, this is Tuesday. So we're going to post today and just kind of update you on what's going on. So a lot of you follow um, either my blog or you follow me on Instagram. So you know what's going on, but not everybody does. So there's going to be some new content. Um, so this is some personal update. Um, on Tuesday, January 26th, I had surgery. I had a laparoscopic with vaginal assist hysterectomy. Um, so I want to share a series of videos throughout like the next year, just kind of on that journey because I'm not the only one. Um, so I want to use this to glorify the Lord, to encourage whoever needs this, um, to let you know that you're not alone. Um, I don't know, whatever God's going to do with it. Okay. I asked you to go to your room and go play. Um, yeah. And I want to have this for my records just so I can look back and see, you know, the progress, see what I dealt with, what I've gone through. I can look back in a year and go, okay, yes, it was worth it. Or man, no, it wasn't. Um, not that it changes anything, but I really want this to be a tool to, um, encourage someone else. So not everything is going to be on this. I'm just going to have some of these videos here and there. Um, and they will be labeled, um, hysterectomy journey, part one, two, three, whatever, uh, post-op, something like that. So if you want to skip over it, completely understand, not offended at all. If you know someone that's gone through this though, and maybe they're struggling, maybe they have questions, maybe you or someone you know is thinking about having this surgery done, then I hope these videos are help to you. I understand that you need to talk to your doctor. Nothing I say is medical advice, okay? I am not a physician. You need to talk to your doctor. Um, but you also need to be your own advocate, okay? So I understand God gave us doctors. I understand some of those doctors are quacks. So um, that's just where we are. So you need to cover this in prayer um, for sure. Why did I have this surgery? Um, uh, so I'm 29 and no one wants to be in menopause when they're 30 um, or 29, but here we are. So why did I have this done? Most of you know that I have uh, struggled with polycystic ovarian syndrome and fibromyalgia for a long time. It's been about two and a half years since I got the fibro diagnosis and it was a process. It was, it, looking back, it was it. And I got my diagnosis a lot faster than most people do. But I think it was about six months before they finally were like, okay, this is it. So it was six months of pain, six months of struggling um, with no answers. Just try this medication, try this medication, and nothing worked. Or it didn't work very long. So a lot of things my body will actually take for about four months. And it doesn't take it anymore. It doesn't help anymore. So like last year, I was on the Mgality shot for migraines. And it worked great. I had to give myself the shot. wasn't an issue. It worked. It greatly decreased my migraines. But that fourth month, my body just did not take the shots. Um, at the injection site, there was like a knot from where it did not like dissipate through my body like it should have. It was very tender. It took a while for that to disperse. Um, and I just started having more migraines again. So it, it stopped working. And that's okay. I've had some natural things that were about the same. I was taking um, salmon oil, a good quality salmon oil, and turmeric with black pepper. Um, and it worked great for about four months. And then I didn't see a difference anymore. Um, so I stopped taking it because it wasn't cheap. And if it's not working, then I don't want to just keep taking stuff. So there's that. Um, so it just depends. So I've dealt with this. And I had noticed watching my body over the last couple years that um, when my cycles would come that, you know, your hormones are supposed to drop, but it would put me in a fibro flare. So I would have increased headaches. I would have increased pain. I would have fatigue, insomnia, brain fog, um, more migraines, all the stuff, but it was increased and it was so long. So there's a couple months that like the whole month, was a flare. Last year, all of July was a flare. I really didn't get to enjoy my summer. My garden was trash because I just, 
I couldn't take care of it like I needed to. Um, so that's just, it's hard. It's discouraging, especially when your mom, your wife, your homeschool mom, you, people depend on you. Um, my family is great and they are gracious and they help, but that's just hard, you know, as a mom to try to reevaluate and work around your body. Um, but I did, we did, and it was okay, but it was getting worse. So as I'm watching that, my cycles are doing this. Um, it's making things worse. It's getting more intense. So, well, let's look at the hormones. And when those hormones start to drop, that's when things start. And it was the week before my cycle, the week of my cycle, at least the week after. So I'd have like three to seven days a month where I was like, hey, I'm okay. I still have pain. Like I was in pain every single day, but my energy was better. Um, time with my husband was better. And then it would fall off and we'd start all over again. Or my cycles weren't regular because I wasn't. So I might have two this month. I might not have anything for three months. Um, and nothing was really being done about it. So in July, I got, um, July, I think it was like July 31st, I got an official PCOS diagnosis. Um, been battling that for 10 years and could not get the diagnosis because I am not overweight and I don't have acne. Those are two telltale signs of PCOS in women. And then you add in um, hair growth where it should not be because your testosterone is too high and irregular periods and all this stuff. And I didn't have those top two markers, so I could not, no one would diagnose me. My blood work was always considered to be normal by my OB, by my endocrinologist, um, even though those testosterone levels were higher than they should have been. And, but it wasn't like off the charts, extremely high. And it was just, maybe it's at this point in your cycle. So unless I took birth control, I wasn't normal, I wasn't regular. If I took birth control, then I was guaranteed to have a flare every single month because now I'm having a cycle every month. And that's just terrible. Um, so I had the option to do nothing, to keep living with it, take something for the pain for the fibro as needed, um, and live with it. Or take birth control every day, which I did not need, and be regular and have a cycle. Or I could take progesterone 10 days a month to bring a cycle. So, okay, not the end of the world. Or I have this surgery, and I might have to take estrogen every day. Um... So either way, please put it down, all the way down. So either way, I'm having to take something. But if we can balance it out, put my body at zero, and just do estrogen from there to get me to where I need to be, and I don't have the fluctuations, I don't have the flares, um, I don't have the missed periods, I don't have the cramping, I don't have periods at all, then that definitely seemed like an option I needed to pursue. So I met with my primary care provider who um, has a female perspective because she's a woman and she takes care of my fibro. So she does all my blood work for that. Um, I saw a rheumatologist, which is normally who actually takes care of your fibro and who diagnoses you. And he was like, everything's fine. There's nothing I can do for you. Um, so I'm not going back to that guy. Um, so my primary care takes care of that. She writes my pain medicine um, for my fibro, which isn't like a super high, it's not like oxycodone or anything like that, um, or like, you know, hydrocodone or whatever. It's not like that. Um, I take meloxicam, um, and I just take it at night. It's a low dose. I take it at night just because if I don't, I get like restless hand syndrome. It's like restless leg, but it's in my hands. So my hands feel like they're swelling and they itch. Um, not that I necessarily want to move them, but it's just, tingling, terrible sensation, and I can't sleep. The meloxicam helps. And if I am in a lot of pain, it normally helps with that too, but it's really mostly for that restless hand syndrome. Um, so there's that. So it is um, where we are. That's what the fibro does. She handles the fibro. Uh, so I met with her, explained my thought process. Um, I do have medical, some medical background. I was an EMT. I was a licensed EMT or certified, whatever, um, national registry certified EMT um, years ago. And I did go through um, some of the prereqs to be an RN. Both of my kids were in the NICU. So medical is just my thing. Um, I handle a lot of the medical for our church. Medical works with security. And so I handle the medical side of things, making sure our um, kits are stocked and ready, prepared, stuff like that. So I have a heart for medical. Um, and it, um, so through that, learning about hormones and stuff, and now I'm learning more of like the natural side of things. Um, 
you know, beyond just the standard blood work and stuff. So we're, we're getting into that kind of knowledge. But knowing what I know, I went to my primary care, explained everything, explained my thought process, asked her if I was on the right train of thought, told her if I'm not, tell me what I don't know. Um, I'm not trying to justify a surgery. I mean, nobody wants to go through surgery and recovery and menopause, okay? So she said, no, you're right. Your thinking is right. I think, I think this could help you. So I went to my um, primary OBGYN who um, was a nurse practitioner. I was seeing the MD, um, but my doctor retired. So I, I saw his nurse practitioner, um, and talked to her about it, told her what my primary care said, went through again all of my train of thought on the hormones and the flares and this roller coaster. She was not in love with the idea. She wanted me to try um, a new birth control that had come out. I agreed. Didn't want to, but I did. I thought it's worth a shot to just take this pill. I'm going to have to take something every day, try the pill. If all I have to do is take a pill and I don't have surgery, then fine. Um, I was miserable for six weeks on that pill. So I came off of it and I said, I don't have to live like this. I can live the way I was before with not doing anything and it's better than this. So I talked to her again and we moved forward with the surgery. Um, so my surgery had all the pre-op stuff, you know, the surgeon did not want to take my ovaries because I'm 29, but I did not think, my doctor did not think I would get the relief that I was wanting, hoping for, um, to leave my ovaries since that controls all of the hormones and the hormones go with the flares, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Um, so that's why I've been a little missing in action lately. Um, recovering, today is January 31st. And I am five days post-op um, from the surgery. I do not at this point regret the surgery. Um, I am healing well. So my surgery was at 8 o'clock Thursday morning. Um, and I was home about 12 hours later. It was, I was originally expecting to be there about 24 um, to, you know, it was not an outpatient surgery. So I was expecting to stay overnight. But the surgery went flawlessly. Um, I had a little bit of trouble waking up from the anesthesia. And it wasn't really the anesthesia, it was the morphine. So I'm a little sensitive to morphine. Um, wasn't like allergic or anything. It just was strong for my body. And so I woke up from that, um, got moved into a room, and sat. Just, just sat. Um, they finished, um, they ran the morphine drip. They slowed it down, but ran it for a little bit. And then um, gave me a Percocet and then gave me um, Toradol in my IV because that was going to last long enough, you know, for me to get home and get some sleep. That was a longer lasting pill or longer lasting medication. And then they sent me home with pain medicine. Um, so there was hardly any bleeding after surgery at all, which was why I got to go home. Um, and my blood count looked good. So Tuesday, two days before my surgery, they did a bunch of labs, did a CBC, all that stuff, made sure I was okay, not anemic. And then after surgery, they did another set of labs, compared the CBCs, everything was good. So they let me go home. Um, I could not sleep um, laying down that night because of the gas from the surgery. Um, I had all this pain up here in my shoulders and in my collarbones, which is normal. Um, it just, it hurt so bad. And to lay down hurt even more. And then I felt like I couldn't breathe because of all the pain and I just, I couldn't breathe. So if you are looking to have the surgery or you are in that, you know, that phase, sit up. Um, I sat up in the hospital bed and I was propped up at home. I've got two pillows on the couch behind me and my heating pad. So definitely you're gonna want that. A lot of people are sleeping in a recliner. I don't have a recliner. I tried to sleep sitting up in bed and I did. I actually fell asleep for about an hour. And then I woke up. I didn't wanna fall out of the bed, okay? Um, so I came to the couch and brought my pillows and just kind of propped myself up between the back and the arm of the couch so I could sit up. And I slept for eight hours, eight and a half hours. So I actually did sleep good that first night. Um, which I was very thankful for. Um, so days two through three, four um, have been fine. Pain is steadily, slowly, but steadily decreasing um, so far. I have not had any sort of pain medication at all since Friday night about 10 o'clock. Um, I took some of the prescription made pain medicine that they sent home with me and I went to sleep, but that was the last time I've taken it. I haven't needed Tylenol or ibuprofen up to this point. Um, 
I'm staying under my heating pad for the most part and sitting a lot. I'm walking some, but I'm also sitting. So you have to try to get up and move. It helps work the gas out. It helps get things, you know, helping and healing, but you don't want to overdo it and cause yourself to be set back. Um, so don't rush it. Give yourself grace, 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 okay? We homeschool. Today is day five. Today's the first day we're even attempting to homeschool. Don't know if we're even going to get through the whole day, but we're going to do a little bit. Um, so day three was Sunday. I was able to put my makeup on and go to church Sunday morning. So I thought I sat through Sunday school, Sunday morning. We had dinner on the grounds and then I came home. I did not stay for the afternoon service. Um, I just live streamed it from home and sat on the couch. Um, day four was Monday, yesterday. And this week is missions conference. I actually felt good and I went to church last night. Um, I folded a basket of laundry yesterday, so I'm not cooking right now. Our church is being so gracious, and ladies are bringing us meals um, in the evening for dinner, so I'm not having to cook, and there's enough left over for lunch, and my kids are getting cereal and oatmeal for breakfast right now, um, things that they can do on their own or I don't have to stand for, so it's okay. Cereal is not the best, but it's not the devil, and mama has to heal. So, if you have to do things like that, it's okay. Meal prep before and make, you know, soups and stews and chili and things like that that you can freeze. My mother-in-law did that, so we have that in the freezer um, for the next week or two. Um, ask for help. Okay, my kids are 14 and 6. They are helping. They are doing a lot. Um, my 14-year-old did the laundry yesterday, and I was able to stand and fold one basket of laundry, and I made the bed. That's the first time I've been able to make the bed. So those are wins, okay? You have to take it slow. Today is day five. Um, makeup is done, which just helps me feel a little, you know, put together. Um, if you need to take a nap, go take a nap. If you need to rest, rest. If you can't bend over, don't bend over, okay? Um, there's lots of different options for the surgery, but like I said, mine was laparoscopic, so I don't have you know, a gigantic incision. I have three small incisions and they were glued close. So I don't have external stitches, um, which helps just not getting snagged on and stuff like that. Um, I had surgery Thursday. I took a shower Thursday morning before I went in and then it was Friday morning. Um, I was able to shower again. Um, so I felt good. They, they cleared me to take a bath or a shower if I wanted to. Um, that's about all I did Friday. Like I, Took a shower, brushed my teeth, put my skincare on, and came to the couch. So, it is slow. It is small steps. Um, do not lift. Lifting things, it hurts. Coughing hurts. Laughing hurts, okay? You have to give yourself grace. Um, you know, if you work, you're going to be out of work for a couple weeks. That everybody's body heals differently, so do not compare yours to someone else's. I'm not giving you this to tell you what your healing should look like. I want to encourage you and give you a view of a fresh perspective of what you could possibly deal with. I didn't want to make this video a year from now and say, oh yeah, my post-op was great. We're gonna do this as things progress so I, I don't have a distorted view of how I'm feeling of what's going on. Um, little discomfort right now, but I'm gonna go get on the couch and get under my heating pad. So you might have a good morning you might have to rest in the afternoon and have a bed and have a good evening. That's okay. Okay. Don't push it. Let your kids help. Let your husband help. Ask them to help. Okay. Um, it's not always natural or just easy for them to jump in and do things. They don't know, you know, what you want or what you need if you don't tell them. So say it. My kids load and unload the dishwasher. Um, my son takes out the trash. So it's, there's just, they can vacuum, they clean the bathrooms all that stuff. So your kids need to know how to do these things anyway. Um, but don't be superwoman. There's no medal. There's no trophy for, you know, vacuuming on day four. You're, you're going to be in more pain. Okay. Um, if you need the pain medicine, take the pain medicine. If you don't want to take the prescription medicine, get some strong ibuprofen, some Tylenol. Some people are even putting them together. So they'll take a Tylenol and a Motrin or an ibuprofen together. And that helps with the pain. Um, as long as you're cleared for that. So some doctors are sending their patients home with um, blood um, thinner to prevent a blood clot. If your doctor did that and there's a concern for that, take the medicine, okay? Don't be miserable. Don't be miserable. Um, like I said, today's day five and I am already noticing um, body temperature changes. I don't know if I mentioned that yet. 
Um, I had a hot flash Sunday putting my makeup on, and yesterday I was roasting. So I've been cold for two years because of the fibro. I've been hurting because of the fibro, but right now I'm not. I am mostly warm to hot. I do get chilly some. I start to get cold again for a little bit. Doesn't seem to last very long, and I am warm again. I'm not having night sweats yet. Um, I am taking collagen. Um, definitely keeping up on my collagen to help with the muscles. Um, collagen is not just hair, skin, and nails, but not having estrogen, you're gonna need that for your hair, skin, and nails. Um, you're gonna need it for um, your gut health. You're gonna need it for your muscles, um, internal muscles, all the things, okay? So I'm definitely keeping up on my collagen. Um, if you need estrogen, take the estrogen, okay? Um, if it's safe for you, your doctor recommends it, you need it to feel better, don't be miserable, okay? Um, so the temperature changes have started. Before surgery, my house was at 74 degrees. That's where my thermostat stayed. And if it got to 73, I noticed, like I was just, I was cold. Um, it was not uncommon to be 74, 75 degrees in my house and I would be under a heated throw. It was just, I was just cold all the time. Um, I woke up this morning and my husband has moved the thermostat to 71 degrees and um, I was thankful. He, he went ahead and just moved it um, for me to be comfortable and everyone else is gonna adjust, you know, they'll be okay. Um, so yeah, so that's where we are. Last night in church I got hot and I actually stepped outside for a minute in the service. It was about 50, 55 degrees here yesterday, um, rain. I had the front door open for a little bit, turned the thermostat off just so I could have that cool breeze come in the house. Um, yeah, so that's where we are. That's really the biggest side effects right now. I'm not cold. I'm not hurting from the fibro. My hands don't hurt. This is the first time in a long time I have not been in pain. My joints don't hurt right now. It's all my abdomen is what hurts right now, but you know, that's normal. Um, yeah, I'm not cold. I'm not hurting. So that's where we are. That's, that's my first... Um, notice of any side effects, notice of the surgery other than the pain. So my goal is to keep bringing you the same content, the biblical teaching, biblical encouragement. That is why God wanted me to start this channel. But this is a more personal level on if you're looking at having the surgery, if you're going through this right now, um, to let you know you're not alone, to let you know that God is still good. He sees what you're going through. He knows how you feel. Um, trust him. Pray about it. Pray about having the surgery if this is something you're considering or you think you need. Um, pray about the steps. Pray about your recovery. You know, God doesn't leave us, you know, just because we're in pain or anything. So, just remember those things. Take it easy. Give yourself grace. Um, thank you for praying for me. A lot of you have reached out. You've checked on me. You've prayed for me, and I really do appreciate that. Um, so like I said, if this is not something for you, feel free to skip over this. If someone else could use this though, share it with them. Uh, maybe someone you know is going through this. Um, if something feels off, feels wrong, feels like it's too much pain, call your doctor. Do not be afraid to call. Do not be afraid to ask questions. So, um, so that is it for today. Um, the next video will be the normal, um, biblical encouragement teachings that you are used to. Uh, so I hope maybe this helps someone, encourages someone, um, and it just helps me to be able to document what I am going through and how I'm feeling so I can look back um, in, you know, in months, years to come. So thank you guys for everything. And until next time, stay in the Word, stay close to the shepherd, and let Him lead you in paths of righteousness.